Welcome back to part two of the Unify Protect tutorial. Um, so we are on Unify OS 3.1.12. Uh, there's an update for Unify Protect right now that I'm not running currently just because I'm not on site to do that update. I am remote right now. So let's get into Protect software here. So first, what you're going to see when you log in is this is the dashboard for Unify Protect. And what you're going to see here is uh, all of the most recent events, uh, motion detections. Uh, gives you kind of like a little bit of a chart of time frame. And then if you hover over top of it, it shows you, hey, how many were people, how many were vehicles, what cameras, percentage, uh, how much percentage was sound activated, those type of things. Um, on the left-hand side, it shows you which NVR you currently have, what the IP address is, uh, your system uptime, and then the quantity of cameras and how what each ones are. So on this system right now, we're currently running 10 HD cameras and 9 2K cameras. And camera capacity for how much processing power the unit has, we have, we're using about 56% of the NVR's capability. Uh, I would say I don't like to get more than like 85 to 90% because I, I like to leave a little bit of breathing room. Um, so these NVRs are stackable now, which is great, which means that you can get a second one uh, and stack it on top of it and it'll all show up as one large NVR, uh, which is great. Um, so that it shouldn't be a problem. We're at 19 cameras here. Uh, we should be able to get quite a bit more on here before we have to move on to a second one. Uh, storage overview, it's telling us, hey, we have 47.8 terabytes available. And then this is showing us what it is, uh, what it's recording. So the light, light blue is time lapses. The uh, darker blue is detections. And then the purple is continuous. So most of our stuff is continuous. Storage capacity, we have capacity to store right now. Uh, we kind of beefed up the hard drives in this just because there uh, there's plans to add a lot more cameras to this. Um, so we're 95 days, 7 hours, and 54 minutes. And this is also in basic protection mode, so it's not raided. Uh, if we put it in a higher protection mode where it was a little bit more uh, raid setup, this would probably get cut in about half. So. And then it says here what our earliest recording was three months ago. So that's your dashboard. Um, that's that's really all the information here. It's kind of like this really quick snapshot of like everything you can see. Um, and then there is a space here that you can submit a support ticket to um, Unify. So if you go down to the next one, you have Unify devices. And this is literally exactly what it says, Unify devices. What cameras are in the system? And these columns are customizable. The way I have this set up is I want to see the name of the, of the camera. I want to see the status of its online or offline. And I want to see the model of it. So uh, that's more just for me so that I can remember uh, just because I have a lot of these deployed. Uh, the IP address so that I can hit them individually if I need to. And then I want to see their experience. Most of them should always say excellent. If you, these are all wired cams. Uh, if you have the Wi-Fi ones that they sell, this will show you like their Wi-Fi experience and it'll say poor, good, excellent. Uh, and then sometimes it'll show you like a percentage. Um, and then I have what's the last event that it recorded and then recording mode. I have all of these set to always, and you can do some scheduling and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that later. Um, but you can see this in list mode, which I like, or you can come up here and hit it in view mode here. It looks like I have a camera offline about a week ago. We, uh, we sent out a new camera, so they're going to pop that in. So, and that's it for this one. There's not much here. You can do a little bit of a search here as well. Um, and then if you want to customize the, the columns here, you can come over here and say, Hey, this is what I want to see. And then these are the columns that you can see. So like we can add Mac address if we in there, if we want to as well. So depending on how you're managing your IT, if you're doing it by MAC address, you can still do that. If we go over here, the next one down is the multi-view. So if we go over here, this is the, what, like it says, it's, it's, it's the live view. So this is the multi-view. So the default view is just going to show you every camera. So like they'll stack cameras on top of each other a lot of times as well. Um, and if you notice like this camera switching, it's because it's on multiple like cameras because there's 19 cameras and there's only 16 uh, looks if we go full screen here uh, now this is giving us a full screen look at these security cameras and then we can change the quality down here to low quality I'm in automatic right now and again I'm on the web so there's a little bit more loading if you hit IP address when you're local on the network there's a lot less I mean significantly less loading time uh, we go into high quality uh, for the time being just so we can kind of see there is a significant difference if you can see there's some artifacting here 
uh, the detail just kind of uh, isn't is not bad for being remote, but it's just also it's not crisp. Uh, if I was to download any of these files to my computer right now, they would look super clear. Um, all right, so select live view here. So this is where you get to set up how you want to see things. So this is the default 19 camera one. And then I just have two like generic ones in here. So if I add a multi view, uh, this, this is where it pops up. So the first one is just the overview for we can name this. So uh, test protect view. And we can say, hey, uh, I want to share this with everyone. And that means that everyone that has a account to this protect will be able to see this layout. So if you're a security lead at your church or your facility and you have a, hey, here's the basic look that I want everyone to have, you can create this in your username and then share it and then everyone will be able to see it. Or if you are just one of the side, you know, volunteers watching the multi-view, you can create one because someone goes, oh, I really like that layout. Then you can just share it and they don't have to recreate it on their own. So uh, we can save that. Now that just is in there now. Um, we didn't really do anything. So if you want to go in here, we can hit the little pencil. That's how you edit one that's already been made. This little grid button right here is how we actually assign a, how many cameras we want. So let's just go with 12 cameras. And this is the list of all of our cameras. And if you notice that they have the name and then that's just blank here, as soon as I add that camera, there's a little green check mark that pops up there. And then you can just start clicking and dragging these, you know, anywhere you want. And if you go, hey, I really want like three of these classroom cameras to just kind of rotate because maybe, maybe we're doing an event and those classrooms aren't being used that much. Look, I've added the three cameras to rotate, and now I can say I want them to rotate every 10 seconds, uh, and there's a slider that you can change that, or you can say, hey, you know what, just rotate them when there's motion. So if someone pops in one of these classrooms, I'll get notified. Hey, I don't want this uh, classroom in here. We can close that out. If we want to add in uh, multiple things in here, like there's a point where this will just start to kind of fill up. It might not do it because this one is a larger one. But if we did it to this smaller one here, yeah, see right here how it says, oh, hey, there's three cameras. If you click on this, it'll pop this little window up, and then that way you can you know, exit out of the ones that you, that you don't want to have in there. And then that's exactly how you get rid of cameras. You just hit the little X, and then they're gone. So, And then once you're done, you just hit apply changes, and now that camera is there. We'll see. Um, you can click on the ind each individual camera and it expands it uh, to full screen. And you can go, hey, I'm going to grab a snapshot of that. So that just grabbed a, a snapshot of it uh, for a picture. And that is your multi-views. Next one down is the playback. So if we click on playback, uh, it's going to start with the top camera. And so what you're going to see is a preview of the camera, we'll start with the one that's not offline. Uh, it's going to show you the preview of the camera, which is live, and then it's going to show you the full timeline. So you can see everything. You can zoom in and out of that timeline to be uh, more detailed or not. You can see the events. You can click on them, and let me see this. It should start playing. There we go. There's the event. Like one lady pops in. Or if we go over here, we can click on detections, and this is just gonna show us the actual detections, right? There's not the timeline, it's just giving us a list of all the detections. So if we want to select these, we can select multiple events, and then we can export them, and then they will export the clips to the desktop MP4s, which we can then upload to our Google Drive, and our servers, we can give them to the police, we can give them to pastor, boss, whatever we need to do. Um, and you just literally scroll down here and click on all the cameras and it shows you all the cameras. Um, that's really basic what it is. Um, once you find the spot in the timeline, you can export the, the clip here, you can delete footage. Um, you can adjust the camera picture if we want to from here. So it gives us all these uh, settings so you can do that right there. Uh, and again, there's another snapshot there. Uh, and then the play forward and how, like the speed. Do we want to enter full screen? Do we not want to be in full screen? Um, you know, fast forward 10 seconds, 15 seconds, that kind of stuff. So 
Uh, that's pretty much it for this one. If we, uh, let's see, let's close this out of here. If we go to the next one, this is detections. So this is just going to give us a list of every detection that the system has. Uh, so we are G3 flexes, which don't have as good of detection. Uh, but most of the domes are either G4 domes or G5 domes. And those have detections for people and for vehicles. So this is all of them. If we go person, it's going to show us the detections that have people in them. And if we say, hey, vehicles, it's going to show us all the detections that have vehicles in them. And then Protect does have a couple of sensors that they have uh, that can are programmable for, for motion, for windows, for temperature, those kind of things uh, that can be programmed to trigger recordings of a camera. So that would be in here. We don't have any of those on this site. So that's why uh, there's none there. Next one down is insights. Uh, this one's pretty cool. This is a newer, um, a newer one. So if we go and we select, let's go to one of these exteriors. Um, so this is the main entrance to the, to the church's office here. And what this is showing us here is the heat map of where the most motion is. So obviously this is a heat map. So the hotter it is means the more motion there is there. Now this is the front door. So obviously there's lots and lots of motion here. And then there's motion here where people tend to walk and then where cars tend to go. You can see this chart and it shows you how many motion events, you know, there are. Uh, we can select person, chart changes, and then the heat map changes, and then we can say vehicle, and we can say, hey, where are most of the vehicles? Oh, look, the parking lot. That makes sense. So you may be saying when we're on the person, like, why does this look a little bit different? Well, it's because this is where the most people are are detected on the um, motion this door is moving. So the camera is noticing that motion as well. So that's why that looks a little bit different. Uh, up at the top right hand corner, you have one day, seven days, one month, and then you can select a, um, a whole like different time frame. So you can start to kind of see, Hey, you know, there's a lot of people coming in and out of this door that isn't a main entrance. You know, maybe you want to be able to use some of this data to say, Hey, maybe we should put a greeter at this door. Um, so I think there's a bunch of cool things that you could use this information for, which I think is fun. Um, and then when you're in here, this is the system log. This is pretty much mirroring what we saw earlier. Um, so it looks like we had a, a power outage or something at some point in time this weekend. Uh, so it's giving us some of that admin activity. So if you have multiple users, you can see who's logging in and logging out. Uh, and then it's kind of giving you a categorized list of the motions instead of by camera, it just is showing you, you know, Hey, this, this camera had a motion, you know, four minutes ago, or let's see if we scroll down here. Yeah. These, they clearly had an event this morning and then smart detections. Um, again, I think G4 and G5 cameras are the ones that have smart detection right now. Um, and this is being able to decipher, not just that there's motion because like motion could be like a butterfly floated by, right? And the camera triggers and says, Hey, there was motion here. This is a smart detection where it's like, Hey, I know that this was a human being, or I know that this was a car. Um, so that's what smart detection is. Next thing down here is settings. Um, so this is the record settings. Uh, we can say, Hey, we want record, uh, uh, retention to be auto, just record it. And when the hard drive fills, it'll just record over itself. Uh, or we can hit custom and set that, um, we can add schedules. So, uh, for instance, if we say, Hey, we really just, the classrooms literally never get used outside of Sunday mornings. And we only want to record those classrooms on Sunday mornings. You can schedule those to be put into motion or into continuous mode, depending on a schedule. Uh, when to record, I have this set to always, um, and that's a global setting. So that's anytime we put a new camera in, it automatically goes to that so that I can manually tell it not to be that. Um, record mode, continuous or detections only, detection modes. Hey, do you want just motion or you want smart detections? Uh, you can do both. So, I mean, I haven't done this yet, but, you know, usually their motion is, is the best option for you, uh, unless you're all G4, all G5. And again, you're just trying to set up motion times instead of continuous recording. So, um, 
and then you can go over. Can, uh, so sorry, I skipped a section here. So seconds of motion needed to trigger. So if you are going to set your cameras to record only on motion, this is where it needs to see motion for five seconds for it to record one second, whatever you want to set it to. So that way, like, again, sometimes like if there's a, a parking lot camera that can see one of the streets and no matter how much you change the situation where it can, what it records its zone, it still records. Like maybe you want to set that to, Hey, we need five seconds of motion in the parking lot before we hit record. Um, and then it, what it's going to do is it's going to record all the time. Then these, uh, right here, seconds to record before motion detection, meaning that it's going to dump all the information outside of that a lot of time that you've given it. So if you say, Hey, I want five seconds. Let's see how far up will this go? 10 seconds. You could say 10 seconds. So it's going to record always. And when it gets to 10 seconds and then it gets to 11 seconds, that first second is going to get dumped and it's going to continually like refresh itself. So it's not eating up that storage. So then all of a sudden there's motion. You have the 10 seconds of motion leading up to the actual motion event. And so what that does is instead of all of a sudden, oh my gosh, there's a person randomly in the middle of our classroom now, how did they get in there and where did they come from? And now we'll say, oh, hey, there's motion here. What's the first 10, like what was the 10 seconds before the motion was activated? And then you can set the motion after detection as well. Uh, so that way, if they sit still for long enough, that it'll still continue to rec record. Uh, camera overlay when you are exporting. Um, so I have time and camera name logo is just the unify logo. As of right now, you can't change the logo. Um, and then nerd mode. Uh, I don't put that information on there. That's, you know, bit rates and you know, all of the, like, like it says nerdy details. So I'm not going to apply any of those, but, uh, system, this is auto adopt bridge devices. Um, and then, setting the time you want to migrate let's say we got a new uh, nvr that we're switching over to we can download this file and migrate it into a new one um, and then advanced uh, so i'm getting insights and low latency video and then geofencing you can turn on as well and then you can completely reset everything from here so be careful and then notifications again you can do off default or custom and say hey what do i want uh email what do i want push notification so i usually set things to default until something annoys me and then i'll go in and and change the customize ability so all right, guys, that is the end of part two. This is probably the longest video that we have. Uh, part three is going to be what does it look like to get a new camera in there and change the name. So stay tuned for part three.